Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Coin Lady channel. I just wanted to share my favorite headline from an article that discussed something that attorney Jeremy Hogan said. Here we are at the Crypto Basics, where we read that an attorney who is in favor of XRP claims that it is easier to register heroin in the United States than it is to register cryptocurrencies. It's also one of my favorite new quotes, thanks to the brilliant lawyer Jeremy Okins. I'd also like to give you an update on a story that's been developing over the past couple of weeks. The Crypto News has this interesting headline, on March 16 th, a $1 billion lawsuit was filed against YouTube influencers for promoting FTX. As a result, a number of YouTubers and other influencers were named in a $1 billion lawsuit for allegedly propping up the FTX cryptocurrency. Among those named was Bitcoin crypto guru Ben Armstrong. First of all, let me say this, because I know some of you may have missed the story the first time around. But it seems like a money grab to me, and Armstrong has been very clear that he hasn't dealt with FTX on any level. But there is an update, and I bring it up because, as terrible as it is that Ben Armstrong and the others have to go through this, Armstrong has some serious fighting him. And his responses have been, well, totally hilarious to me. Because of this, his lawyer has taken legal action against him. He's been in touch with that lawyer. I'm not trying to debate whether or not this is a smart move from a legal standpoint on Armstrong's end. It's amusing in any case. So he's been calling the guy, emailing him, messaging him on social media, and sharing photos of the two of them together. Some of the things I'm not posting are pretty funny, but I want to keep the channel appropriate for all ages. But I'm going to tell you a little bit of what was said. However, I've been Armstrong was eventually served a few days ago. The chain of events that followed is just as comical. I really enjoy Ben Armstrong's music. Again, I'll just let you know what's new. But before I go any further, I do want to make it clear that I have no support of any kind, either financially or legally. I'm not qualified to give you financial or legal counsel. Also, you know that you shouldn't act on any of my recommendations to buy or sell. I'm just a fan who occasionally posts videos to YouTube about crypto-related subjects for kicks. Okay, let's dive right into this Jeremy Hogan business, along with the unregistering of heroin and crypto. Such. From what did all of that originate? The article by Nance and Coinbase had been sucked into a regulatory turf wall, as shared by attorney Jeremy Hogan, is available at Wired. And now this article has expanded to cover more ground. It's not too short and it features a quote from SEC Commissioner Hester P. Purse to drive home the point that some exchanges are stuck in the middle of a turf war between the CFTC and the SEC. If you want compliant crypto in the United States, and you want to send a message that you want crypto in the United States, then you should help companies become compliant. But we don't expect that to occur. Saying come in and register won't fix the problem. Simply put, no one can fathom what it means. But by gathering everybody together and talking about it like grown-ups, to quote a sitting member of the SEC, Hester Pierce's purse. That is the case, of course, and anyone who is intellectually honest will admit as much. Certainly, without a doubt, you are correct. That quote was retweeted by Lloyd Jeremy Hogan from the official Wired account, which has over 10 million followers on Twitter. This is a point he made in an article, what's become clear in 2023 is that it's not just a lack of clear rules from the SEC, he wrote. According to the United States government, all crypto-related businesses are fraudulent and must be shut down immediately. This registration with the SEC is a complete fabrication. Just a trap, really. Again, Jeremy is quoted verbatim. The name is Jeremy Hogan. It's not true. It's a catch right in the sweet spot. The point was driven even further by the group of Basica readers who came up with the article's hilarious headline. You have a better chance of getting your crypto projects approved by the SEC, as Jeremy Hogan put it, than you do of getting your heroin registered with the local sheriff's office. Now that is funny, but also, sadly, true. Hogan sums it up perfectly, I regret to say, and attorney John Deaton retweeted that and said as much. That settles it. Your assessment of Ben Armstrong's character is spot on. 
So many people in positions of influence are being targeted here, among them is YouTuber Graham Stephan, who has millions of followers and occasionally discusses cryptocurrencies but is otherwise more of a general finance guy. My impression is that the lawyer who is suing YouTubers is simply targeting the most popular personalities. Furthermore, it smells like an attempt to take people's money. That's, that seems to be the case. And if Ben is telling the truth and I do believe him because lying about this would be insane then he had zero contact with FTX employees in the days leading up to the company's demise. You could say he had zero ties to either of them. They're still suing them. I can certainly see why you might feel offended by that. Again, in my opinion, he will. He's being sued, quite literally. They're making a claim with utterly zero evidence. Oh, right. Ben Armstrong certainly has some heat to him. He can get a little heated sometimes. I didn't appreciate hearing that. This is the newest, and it comes to us courtesy of Blockworks. The FDX class action lawyers are coming for Bits boy Ben Armstrong, and that's the headline. Bitcoin Armstrong had previously been served by the courts on April 5 for his alleged harassment of attorneys involved in the FTX class action lawsuits. Okay, I'm going to pause right now. Some of you may already know this if you're active members of the XRP community on Twitter, which you really should join if you aren't already. Have fun on there, it's great. There, the majority of the XRP community congregates. But as you've probably noticed, that's been totally cool. He's not pleased with the lawyer who filed suit after him. And he hasn't been shy about sharing his opinion. And once again, I find myself drawn to two of these. I'm willing to lend a sympathetic ear because it appears to be nothing more than a money grab. And I despise it. When attorneys act in such a manner. You can tell something is a money grab just by looking at it. Ben's response, on the other hand, has been hilarious. His actions and the names he's calling them into question. But look, here's the thing. So, in the end, after we read this article, this lawyer will act like a spoiled brat again? River's acting scared because of the bite jar, and he's just crying the whole time. However, Ben Armstrong made a valid point on Twitter, please consider it. It's not against the law to be cruel. Now, the question becomes whether or not this is a sound legal tactic. His lawyer should probably warn him against it. However, Ben has been and he has been fired, and he's spicy and he will not put up with crap from people who have been and and this is the result. But did he actually do anything wrong by intimidating the attorney? To be honest, it's a little hard to believe because I've seen so much and everything Ben Armstrong has posted here is completely audible. This seems like the kind of thing that people truly deserve. From where I'm standing, that's how it appears. But the story goes on because you can be anything you want to be. As you read, you might think to yourself, oh, I guess this is the stuff I need, since most people are likely to be restrained. Everything they could possibly want to say, Ben is doing it. A piece if he's continuing, the case had previously named Armstrong as one of eight influencers who promoted FTX without disclosing the quote, nature and scope of their sponsorships and our endorsement deals, payments and compensations, nor conducting adequate if any due diligence in quote sir claiming that he was working with FTX or on their behalf and he didn't do sufficient due diligence effectively well again Ben Armstrong saying I didn't even talk to them. The most popular YouTubers with the largest audiences appear to be the only ones being charged. Because I haven't been keeping up with Ben's accounts, I can't say. Now. The population is probably around 1.5 million. Okay, I want to hear more of what you have to say. Armstrong is said to have contacted the plaintiff's attorney at a Moscow office during the week after the lawsuit was filed in March. It's primarily done via electronic mail, social media, and telephone. The lawyers initially filed a complaint against Armstrong in March, claiming he had left voicemails threatening to have First Amendment protesters surround his home in Moscow at all hours of the day and night for the purpose of disrupting council meetings. So, let's assume the allegations are true. They are going to have protesters outside your house all day and night because Ben Armstrong has hired lawyer Moskowitz to sue him. Again, this is what everyone being sued by someone out for a money grabbing good faith wants, according to the Chagas bid. Meanwhile, Harmony holds. The most recent document states that Armstrong was not served by the lawyers until April 5. 
To address the quote and other serious matters of Armstrong's conduct to date and quit, attorneys involved in the case asked the court for a hearing. Let me be clear, I'm not going to pretend to have read everything that was sent to this lawyer. From what I've seen so far, however, it seems to boil down to the same old name calling and the like. However, in my opinion, this individual is just trying to make a quick buck. So, if I were in that situation, I'd be pretty angry. But I haven't seen anything that approaches the level of what you might call truly serious issues. We will now proceed. From what I can tell, the lawyer presents a good front. Although I cannot say with absolute certainty that this is the case, it appears that he is merely attempting to play the victim card here. Now, the filing contains more PS. Legal counsel for the plaintiff wrote, Plaintiffs respectfully suggest that any court cannot condone or allow such inappropriate to bullying, unprofessional, and frankly, terrorizing conduct, particularly at a time when social media reaches millions of people in which involves direct threats on officers of the court and their families' emphasis added. Nothing has been brought to my attention, and nothing I've seen in the public domain constitutes harassment. Again, feel free to point out anything I may have overlooked. But what exactly is he claiming, you ask? direct danger. Do you mean the cruel names people have called him? So, take a look at this. And this is so funny it hurts. Similarly, in acknowledgement of service. Armstrong claims he sent a threatening message to Moscow via process server, warning that he would be burying the lawyers and adding, you're going to pay buddy. Now consider this. Never before have I heard a reaction like this. The irony is priceless. Armstrong is subsequently served. The necessary paperwork is enclosed. That's about how I picture it would look anyway. You have been duly served. And then there's the process server, who is probably all set to go at any moment. He was competent in his role, but they surely Armstrong is thinking, whoa, hold on at this point. I need a video of me right now to send to Moscow, can you make one? How about, can you do that? You're going to fork over some cash, he says. It's just so funny to me. Never before have I heard of anything like that that didn't belong in a movie or a book. Wow, that's a great idea. Oh, this is really good. In any case, Armstrong was tweeting about this earlier, and among the things he said can be found the following. The incompetent Adam Moskowitz likes to play the victim card because he can't actually stand behind his incompetence and toxic strategies, so I asked the process server to record a quick video on his phone so he could personally deliver a direct message from me to him. The bully who pretends to be victimized is exactly like him. We, as a community, must take a stand against this. The legal system in the United States makes it possible for bullies to prey on anyone. It's time to start a movement, or for those of us who are sick of being bullied to stop accepting the status quo and work together to create a new one. Adam's humanness has not improved. Are you not having fun? Again, look, I'm on team been here like so unless evidence comes out that indicates there was some actual genuine threat okay, then finally at okay, then Ben did something wrong, but if it's just the name calling and stuff, this looks like a money grab. That seems justifiable to me. So, I'm not sure. Once more, there may be gaps in the coverage. So, all I have to go on is what's out there in the open. And from what I've seen so far, I can say that's not the case. Of course. I'll wrap up here, let you know your thoughts before I do. I don't give advice on money matters. Nothing they say should influence your buying or selling decisions. And please like and subscribe my channel. See you in the next one, bye.